Marina Alexis. She should be a writer. Over the course of Pretty Little Liars' seven seasons, Alison De Laurentiis committed some of the worst acts of any main character on the show. Even after her lackluster redemption in the later seasons, much of her behavior still crossed the line into nasty, manipulative, and cruel. Although there was quite a lot to choose from, here are my top 10 worst moments from Allison. 10. Her four-season absence. It's understandable why Allison would fake her death and go on the run after being tormented by A for months and nearly killed on Labor Day night, which is why this incident is last on my list. But what I've never been able to excuse is Allison remaining gone when she was watching her friends be stalked and tortured for years on end. Instead of appearing to do the very bare minimum of saving them from danger and dropping vague hints that she knew who A was, Do you see A? Everywhere I turn. So do you. Why couldn't she return to Rosewood and actually help them in their mission to take down their stalker? Or at the very least, provide them with some actual information instead of intriguing but useless quotes? Sure, it would have put her at more risk, but that's a risk that the other liars were shouldering alone day in and day out. 9. Threatening Addison Yes, Addison Derringer was a brat and a bully, and one of the most unnecessary characters in PLL's history. But she was also a 16-year-old high school student, and it's impossible for me not to cringe when I watch Allison physically grab and threaten her in the series finale. We have to know someone who knows someone who can take care of her. For someone who had supposedly become such a good and caring person, stooping to the same level as a literal child isn't exactly a good look. 8. Her second escape attempt Allison disappearing to avoid A and save herself before the start of the show was one thing. But one of her least respectable actions, in my perspective, was the fact that her very first reaction to A's reappearance in Season 5 was to pack up and skip town once again. I'd love to stay, Hannah, but I can't. Not while that psychopath is still out there. Not only would this mean abandoning her friends to yet again deal with A on their own, but would also leave them to clean up the mess that she'd created with her kidnapping story. A story that would have been undeniably affected by her disappearing a second time. And the worst part? None of this even seems to cross Allison's mind as she prepares to run. This situation is a perfect example of Allie's inherent selfishness and lack of consideration for anyone around her, even her so-called best friends. 7. The Staged Break-In Speaking of Allison's actions in the first half of Season 5, Allie becoming so desperate for an adult to believe her increasingly dramatic kidnapping story that she blackmailed Noel Kahn into breaking into Hannah's house and terrorizing her mother is possibly one of her most careless acts on the show. As with her attempt to leave Rosewood again, this incident demonstrates a complete disregard for anyone else's feelings if they got in the way of her personal gain. Why would you do that? Well, it worked, didn't it? And what makes this incident even worse is her total lack of remorse when Hannah confronts her about it. She doesn't even seem to understand the real reason why Hannah is so upset. Hannah, I'm, I'm sorry about what happened last night. Okay, I'll pay for the window. 6. Drugging the Liars this is an incident that seems to have been largely brushed over by the audience because of its only brief mention in the season 4 finale. Allison openly admits to drugging her friends with sleeping pills the night of her disappearance in order to try and confirm that none of them could be A. While her desperation is understandable, there is no excuse for spiking another person's drink. Allison had no real knowledge of the medications she had stolen, and her actions could have had serious effects on the liars. And they almost did in Spencer's case. Just because there thankfully ended up being no terrible consequences from Allison sneaking sleeping pills into her friend's drinks doesn't mean it should be brushed aside as nothing. 5. The Charlotte Situation Honestly, I could make an entirely separate list of all the ways that Allison's behavior regarding Charlotte's release from the hospital was terrible. Over the course of this storyline, Allie displays some of her most selfish behavior in the show, and it's the thing that proved to me that she truly hadn't changed. From begging the liars to testify on behalf of their kidnapper and completely dismissing their fear, to her reaction when Arya panicked in the courtroom, from sending that snarky and gloating text to proceeding to throw all four of them under the bus for Charlotte's murder, there was nothing redeemable about Allison's actions here. 4. Bullying Page This is the point in the list where it was hard for me to figure out a ranking because these last four are all so horrible. Allison's behavior toward Page was consistently hard to watch. Once I'm done with that no-neck bitch, she won't even exist. She tormented her over her sexuality, and we learn in season three that it once got so bad that Paige considered suicide just to escape her. It didn't matter what Allison could do to me, because I was willing to do much worse to myself. Many fans believe that Allison's apology upon her return to Rosewood was a sign of a genuine attempt to change. 
but it's hard for me to accept this as the truth when Season 7 shows us another round of Allison's cruelty toward her, but this time as an adult and a professional. I don't really care if she was jealous or hormonal or whatever other excuse people try and use. None of that is a justification for reverting back to a childish bully. 3. Tormenting Emily It was obvious that Allison was aware of Emily's blossoming feelings for her, especially after Emily kissed her in the school library. The way that Allison bullied Emily over liking girls and held the threat of forcing her out of the closet over her head is often excused by fans due to Allison's own struggles with her sexuality later in the show. But I personally don't believe that her own internalized homophobia gave her the right to drag Emily down with her. I will always maintain that Allison's cruel rejection was one of the main reasons why Emily remained in the closet for so long. And it took Emily a lot of time and courage to accept herself after Allison made her feel like there was something wrong with her. 2. Blinding Jenna the fact that Jenna turned out to be a rapist and overall horrible person does not, in my perspective, detract from the awfulness of what Allison did to her. What makes the Jenna thing even worse to me is that we were never given any explanation for Allison's actions, aside from the implication that Allison hated both Toby and Jenna for what she perceived as rejections of her. But I like to pick my own friends. I acknowledge that it's likely that Allie really didn't mean to hurt anyone, though I find it hard to believe she really thought that obvious firecracker was a stink bomb. But she went on to have absolutely no remorse for what she did. At least we got to see the liar's guilt and regret in the early seasons of the show. Even once Allison returns and has supposedly become a better person, she makes no attempt to make amends with Jenna, and even goes so far as to make snarky comments about her holding a grudge over the incident. I grudge much, Jenna? 1. Bully and Hannah The Jenna thing was initially going to be my automatic number one, until I went back and rewatched a few of the flashbacks between Allison and Hannah. Hold on to those baggy sweaters. There's not that much stretch. So you better wear the tightest skinny pants you can fit your big butt into. It was obvious that Hannah had major insecurities over her weight, and Allie took that lack of confidence to an entirely new level by constantly mocking her and making sure she knew just how unattractive and undesirable she was. And Allie didn't even stop with the incessant, unnecessary remarks on Hannah's weight. She went so far as to attack and slut-shame Hannah after catching her kissing Mike making it clear that no guys would ever really be interested in her. He just wanted to feel your boobs, and you let him. And we can't forget about the worst of all, that awful scene where Allison responded to walking in on Hannah binging by encouraging her to start throwing up her food in order to lose weight. I can show you how to get rid of it. While Hannah admits that she didn't partake in the practice after a few times, it sure wasn't due to Allison's influence. Allie's cruel actions went beyond hurt feelings when it came to Hannah. They led to massive body image issues and almost to the development of a serious eating disorder, which is why I had to place it at number one. So there you have it, my list of what I consider to be Allie's top 10 worst moments or actions. Let me know in the comments what you think, and if there's anything I missed that you would have added.